Welcome to Conveyor on Learning and Development. This is Jason Kelsky, your host, and in today's episode, we're going to cover part four of a five-part series where we're discussing the questions and answers around microlearning. In this episode, we're going to answer the question, what is the process for developing microlearning? In our next episode, we'll answer the question, what should you look for in a microlearning platform? And that's going to cover simply objective things that you need to plan for as you get your content to your people. The content that you develop and you learn to develop it through what we talk about today, the process of developing microlearning. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Let me give you the process in four steps. Number one is make your budget. Number two, determine your outcome. Number three, turn your outcome into a logical step-by-step process. And then number four, develop content around that process. Again, number one, make your budget. Now, when I say make your budget, I'm not talking about just finances uh, because you use finances to purchase things and to pay for people's time and to buy assets and to buy equipment. So you can't make a budget until you know what you need tangibly. What assets do you need? What people do you need in place? So by budget, I mean you need to take inventory of what you have and then you need to find out all the different things that you plan to do. Do you plan to have a podcast? Do you plan to have a blog? Do you plan to have your uh, current assets just digitized? What, What is it that you currently have? What is it that you currently need? And that's how you develop your budget. Now it changes. As you set out to create a podcast, you realize, well, I really want a better website or I really need better videos or I really need some infographics. So you need to know that you might have to pay for these things if you don't have a team in place already. Uh, You also need to know whether or not you have the capability of learning some of the things that you plan to do. So maybe you create videos, but do you have somebody who's going to edit them for you? Can you do it yourself? Do you have the bandwidth personally to edit videos. These are things that you have to consider as you make a budget for your content. Now, what we recommend at Conveyor is that you don't overspend on production value. And what we mean by that is that if you consider most people are learning on their phones right now, whenever they need to find information, they're going to go to YouTube typically and they're going to watch a quick how-to video. We highlighted a 2005 Honda Civic oil change Uh, video, actually two videos, and these episodes where we've talked about micro learning. And if you went back and watched those videos, you'll find that they were recorded on phones and they didn't use expensive microphones, lighting cameras. You don't necessarily need those things. The people that you train are currently accustomed to viewing low production value videos. So you may not have to have a high production value. You may not want to spend in that. But if you don't have high production value, you do have to have high solution value, which actually leads us to the second step of the process, which is to develop your outcome. What I mean by that is that if you're going to deliver information and it's not going to be TV quality, movie quality, which is very, very expensive to do. You have to be able to take people from not knowing how to do something or not knowing information to knowing it and being able to do it. So you're going to focus on high outcome, high purpose. And the way to do this is to really ask this major question of yourself. What do you plan for your participants to be able to do? Or ask yourself, what do I want my trainees to learn? You have to determine your outcome. Are you asking them to change oil? Are you asking them to grow as leaders? Are you asking them to plug in sales numbers or fulfill compliance obligations? What are you asking them to do? Find your outcome. As you ask them to do something then, you have to take this big idea and break it down. So let's say that you're wanting to train some sales reps to being better salespeople. You say, well, my outcome is I want better salespeople. That's too general and too broad. You have to highlight specifically what you mean. Well, I want my salespeople to be better communicators. Again, that's way too broad. What do you mean? Do you mean better communicators on the phone? Do you mean better communicators as they're in a Zoom meeting giving a presentation? Do you mean better communicators in person? Okay, I want my salespeople to be better on the phones. Excellent. So if you narrow into being better on the phone, then you can give them some tools. 
but you don't want to give them 10 tools. In fact, you don't want to give them five or three tools. You want to give them one at a time as you develop the process. So maybe you say, in this video, in this blog, in this podcast, you're going to learn one step to being a better phone communicator. That step is this. Learn and memorize your scripts. And maybe you highlight ways to learn the script, but you stay on that one point with one outcome. So as you can tell, microlearning does take some time because you're only giving bites at a time. Be aware of this and understand that's what we mean by determining your outcome. Incidentally, it's also the third step, which is turn your outcome into a process. So once you know your end goal, that's exactly what you do is you break it down into smaller bites. Again, just like what I gave you the example of with the sales training. So this is a logical progression. You're not talking about the history of your topic. You're not talking about all the broad areas that your topic reaches out into. You're highlighting one specific thing and training on that one specific thing. So again, step one, create a budget. Step two, determine your outcome. Step three, develop a process around that outcome. And then step four is develop your content. So you're going to take the process, it's a logical progression, it's actionable steps, you're going to take that and turn it into content. That's your material. You're going to deliver your material to your people through audio files, video files, blogs, articles, infographics, and quizzes and tests. When I say video files, that could also be video presentations. That includes Zoom meetings. That includes webinars. You're going to get your information to your people through these means. Let me reiterate, your micro learning doesn't need to be focused on high production value, but high solution value. So don't overspend on production. Spend your money on delivery. How are you getting your information to your people? And again, that's what we'll talk about next week. Now here's the best practice. Once again, your micro learning content should be clear. This is done by budgeting, planning, processing, and developing your content. Hey, I'd be thrilled if you went over to conveyor.com and tried out our free micro learning sample course, or if you booked a demo. There's no obligation. We're going to continue to offer these episodes where we try to assist you with ideas, concepts, and tools in micro learning. So again, this has been Conveyor on Learning and Development, and I'm Jason Kelsky, your host. Until next time, happy training.